Ah, uh, it's time for Valentine's Day. The day dedicated to love and passion for everyone. But I'm not feeling any love right now, especially not from the YouTube algorithm. So instead of looking at some good romantic shows, let's look at some terrible ones. And good God, does Ben 10 have some terrible romance? Yes, this is pretty much an excuse to talk about Ben 10 again. Ben 10, I love you. You're an awesome superhero show with great creativity, animation, and especially story and world building throughout many of your series. You're still one of my most favorite pieces of media and I'm still very active in your fan base. But good lord, you cannot write romance. And I don't know why you keep forcing it. I'm serious when I say that this show has some of the worst, if not the worst, romance writing in any show I've seen. From the forced to the underdeveloped to the straight up toxic. Like, I think it might genuinely be worse than regular show, and if you get worse than regular show's romance, which is one of the most infamous blunders in TV animation, then I don't even know that could be possible. And I love Ben 10, but it's seriously what I think is its worst aspect, and it needs to be talked about thoroughly. I hate being negative on this channel, but I gotta get this off my chest. And hell, maybe we can all learn something at the end. Starting out with classic, there's only one episode that does focus on romance. Since Ben 10 is a traveling road trip show, it will be hard to have a reoccurring romantic plot. The trio are in Arizona to meet up with a Native American friend of Max, Wes Green, where Ben soon meets and is smitten with his granddaughter Kai. For literally no other reason than she's hot, I guess. But soon the plot does get in action as a Lebowan from the Inner system arrives and causes havoc. But the group doesn't know it's an alien and it's a creature from Native American folklore. Now, I hear you're not even supposed to talk about the creature, and from what I've seen, it looks like it's not really right to call the Lebowan one. I think they might have done some cultural appropriation here. I'll just call it the werewolf. Ben tries to woo Kai, but she's just kinda there. However, the werewolf attacks Ben and scratches the Omnitrix, causing it to go weird, as Ben is transforming into a werewolf himself, slowly, kinda ruining his attempts to woo Kai but they find out that the transformation was actually just the Omnitrix scanning the werewolf's DNA in contact and he's just been slowly stuck in the transformation sequence. Pretty good twist for first viewers, but they defeat the werewolf, well for now, and Ben turns back to normal and in the end finally tries to ask Kai out. You seem like a nice guy, but you're just not my type. Oh boy, but you want to know the real kicker? Well that was before you turned back into, well, you. Just not as cool as when you were a Yenel Dushi. I figured I could train you, tame you. Okay, you are way too young to be into that or even know what that is. Like, what the hell? This is awful. This is creepy. And it even gets to the point where Gwen of all people defends Ben. Train him? Tame him? He's a person, not a pet. Oh well, whatever. So yeah, Kai is the creepiest character in this entire show. But we see that Ben still daydreams a bit about her in a later episode. Which I don't get because if someone said that to me, I'd find a way to file a restraining order. But still, the episode does show an important lesson to its audience as plenty of classic episodes do. That even if you like someone at first, who they can be can be far different than you think. And as Gwen said the best, The thing about a crush is, sometimes you get crushed. Which is a really important lesson to teach. So please why in God's name does this pop-up exist? Are you really telling me that after that, that they end up together? Like, did you even see the episode? The entire point was that the couple could not work. But since Kai is literally the only female Ben met in the series until then, might as well. Just, just why? Why did you need to do this? I mean, the thing is, public trivia is kind of debatable if canon, especially since it contradicts the show often and many get retconned. In fact, this kind of seems forced on the show since I've seen quite a few shows who's also done this, like Avatar. Hell, even Chowder had a lost pop up trivia marathon. Wait, what type of trivia can you get from Chowder? What kind of lore can you possibly get from Chowder? What, is it Mung and Endive's secret off screen relationship? No, the way you always obsess about Mung. I almost think you like him. Then you think wrong. Okay. Wrong. Okay, too much a tangent. Yeah, the episode makes it clear that the two are incompatible, yet the series in some random trivia said that they would be anyway despite absolutely everything. And this is just from one episode. There's so much more later. But remember this, this is very important. Much later. 
Remember everything I've said. Okay? Moving on. Alien Force was the sequel series to the classic series, with two good seasons and a third, eh. Taking place five years later, it introduces a bunch of new status quo changes such as a teenage cast, a new alien playlist, Kevin joining the team, and making sure that it's so dark you can't even see the backgrounds. Like wow, who needs spatial awareness? What if I did all my reviews like this? Isn't this so much better? But back on topic, in the first episode, Ben has a bit of a crush on a local tennis player, Juliana Moto. And in the middle of the season, Ben, with Gwen surging, finally gets the urge to ask her on a date, and she accepts, with them going out on the local pier. Ben is really awkward, but earnest, and does show he really cares about her. And Julie, while having a bit of that stereotypical nice girl problem, does at least share it back as both are just trying to do the best here. It's that kind of awkward teen adorableness that I have a soft spot for. Though unfortunately, a mechamorph symbiote named Ship arrives and tries to attack Ben, shifting into the rides with Ben trying not to expose his identity with his aliens. So yeah, some extra shenanigans was not just all romance. Though, uh, this part... But it stood me up. Julie... I'd never, ever do that to you. Oh, oh god, Ben, just why? But it's not long before Julie is aware of it and gets roped in as Ship kidnaps her as Ben chases. But Julie realizes Ship didn't mean any harm and just wanted to bring it to another mechamorph, a full mechamorph named Bazel, who's trapped in his self-destructing Ship and created Ship to try and find the closest plumber for assistance, but could only find Ben. Also, Ben is forced to tell Julie about his secret identity, but luckily she's super cool with it. Which honestly is great since this normally would lead to a ton of forced relationship drama and tension, but luckily they get out of the way immediately. Also, Bazel does show up in later episodes, but this is the best he's ever been. Aren't you a plumber? I thought you were. I could spend the rest of my life here. Look, is there anyone else I can talk with? Bazel, though, doesn't need Ship, and she just leaves him for the two. The two aren't sure what to do with him until he runs off. But even though the date spiraled out of control, the two still become closer together and commit to a relationship. It's really sweet and wholesome. Now, while I do like the pairing, I do admit it's not anything special. But it does have enough that I can call it a good or at least an okay pairing. It's clear that the two care for each other and have a deep understanding and appreciation for each other, which are the most pivotal parts for a relationship that is seen absolutely nowhere else in this show. Though, since Julie can't exactly be a direct part of most adventures, just being a normal girl, she's mostly just used as a way to ground Ben in times away from the alien plots of his life. It does the job, and it's compelling enough. We see some more in Good Copy, Bad Copy of her trying to help out Ben where she can, mostly in his studies, but also much more directly in Say the Last Dance, trying to find out what's wrong with Big Chill going AWOL. Which is unfortunately the last time this relationship is actually healthy. Yes, that quickly. Most people would say the relationship went downhill in season 3 where Ben got a much bigger ego and jerk personality, but I'd argue it's there in season 2's pet project. We see that Julie all this time has taken Ship as her own pet and has been training him, and Ship is pretty much just a shape-shifting technomantic dog who loves her. Though we see Ben did lie to her to get out of going out with her and instead watches movies at home, which is already a huge red flag. But the Forever Knights, possibly the lamest villain in the entire series, kidnap Ship and forcibly use him to become an alien war machine for intergalactic conquest, forcing Julie to get Ben's help to save him. However, out of nowhere, Ben really doesn't like Ship and doesn't want to save him. You said you didn't want anything to do with Ship. I never said that. Yes, you did. Again, like, what? There was literally no animosity shown in the last time they met. He was unsure, but he didn't hate him. When did this happen? And you might say, oh, well, Ship attacked him. Of course he doesn't like him. And I would accept that, but they never acknowledged that. And even then, Ben found out why he did that. And Alien Force Ben at this point is a really rational guy. Like, I don't get it. This is really just a Force unneeded conflict. Like, how can you not like Ship? He's insanely adorable. He's a shape-shifting robot dog that's awesome. But even Julia wants to fight the knights herself despite the danger and Ben warning her, showing a harder and more determined side to her than the usual nice girl stuff would make you think. And Julie really does speak her mind how Ben's behaving, and even Gwen and Kevin have their back and think Ben's unreasonable. But it's a good thing she did come since he's able to break through the mind control the knights gave Ship back to her side, showing how much she truly loves him, and also conveniently gives him a new spacecraft transformation which even the crew are excited to use, even Ben is. 
And then the episode ends with him trying to crush Ben, which he completely deserves. While this episode is surprisingly good for Julie, giving her more of a backbone than usual nice girl self, this was pretty bad for Ben. It just felt really out of place for his character arc, being especially standoffish and rude to his girlfriend when he never has before. And it's really just because he's written to randomly not like shit for no reason. And as I said, it's not like this couldn't be done reasonably, but the episode really does it and it feels especially forced. Even beyond Ship, Ben was kind of a hypocrite since he's mad at Julie for not telling him about Ship. Meanwhile, it's acknowledged he lied to her in the beginning for no reason. It just feels really out of place and makes Ben look like a crappy person, which you're gonna see much more often. Like, honestly, this is peanuts compared to how he is later. Speaking of Julie and Ship, this episode becomes very important in the season finale and the end of the Hybrid arc, where she and Ship join Ben's army to take down the Hybrid before the fleet comes to destroy the planet, and it's even pivotal since they use Ship to reach the Hybrid's home planet, becoming very important for the next episode we're talking about. Season 3 focuses once more on Julie and Ship, and arguably the Ship, but not that Ship, on the relationship and her relation with Ship. Why did I script that? Anyway, in the episode Vredel Vredel, or... Wait, is this Don't Fear the Repo? Like, this episode has two names, it's weird. After Ship's involvement in the Hybrid War, Bezel, remember him, seeks to reclaim Ship as his property, using his fame to sell him to the highest bidder, and hires the Vredel brothers to repossess Ship by force. The Vredels, by the way, are a synthetic alien species comprising of one family and are somehow alien southerners. And it over! Thank you kindly. I can't read that. Yeah, neither can we. This universe has everything. But the group splits as Ben and Kevin go to get the core order reversed as Gwen and Julie try to protect Ship. What is it with her and that dog anyway? God, Ben, what happened to you? Granted, this is season three where Ben's character went on the toilet by network interference, but this does correlate how it was before. But like, imagine if someone's boyfriend actually talked about their girlfriend's dog like this. It's awful. Maybe Ben just being an ass since his own dog got retconned. In fact, Gwen brings up that Ben only sees to appreciate Ship when he's useful to him and not as, you know, a living being. I just find it so incomprehensible that Ben, the intergalactic hero who shows respect for everyone and aliens, just hates Ship just because. It just feels so forced to have stupid teen drama for no reason. And you don't want Julie to lose her pet either, right Ben? Oh, sure. That sounded sincere. But when the Vredels attack, we see Ship can merge with Julie to form an awesome giant mecha suit. Like what? This is so cool! Now this is some awesome payoff. I love this so much. This is totally gonna pay off and now Julie can join the team on adventures, right? Yeah, no, this barely gets used at all in the future despite how cool it is. Come on, Cho, you gift wrap story potential to yourself and you just throw it away without a second thought. I can't believe this. But anyway, Ben, despite being an egotistical asshole, gets the judge to revoke the order from Bazel and get the Vredels to piss off. He's not gonna pay you. Not gonna pay us? But Julie tries to say, You went halfway across the galaxy just to save Ship, so I know you really do care about him. Which, yeah, doesn't really feel genuine, I'm sorry. Thanks for being optimistic, but yeah, he's not. But, you know, it kind of feels like you're putting a lot of pressure on our relationship. By God, can you just shut your mouth? I just don't understand why they do this. There is no reason for Ben to act like this at all. It's just so forced, it makes you want to hate Ben since Ship has done literally nothing but help him. It's so bad. But okay, you can argue that technically, it's not a problem with the relationship. It's just Ben hates your dog for some reason and gets the arguments about it. But oh boy, does that change with Ultimate Alien. AKA just more alien force with only a new Omnitrix that was barely utilized and revealing Ben's identity to the world. Okay, to be fair, the first episode did have a really good moment where Julie supports Ben going to school with his identity released and gives him the confidence to go in. You see, like an actual wholesome, healthy relationship where the partners support and help each other, which is non-existent in the next episode and maybe one of the most hated episodes in the fan base, Dupe. Julie is having a championship tennis match, but Ben gets distracted by some forever knights bringing him to a museum when he was already late, getting scolded by Gwen to actually support his girlfriend's endeavors. But Kevin thinks the knights might be up to something. Now despite the obvious ways to deal with both, Ben finds out that they're playing the new Sumo Slammers movie and he decides he wants to see it. Yes? Really? Ben would ditch his girlfriend to see a movie. 
and it's not even like a special premiere or a last day, it's just a screening. Dude, just see it tomorrow, why are you like this? Hey, remember? But you stood me up. Julie, I'd never, ever do that to you. Well, now look where it got. But Ben decides to do all three at once by cloning himself as Echo Echo and then turning back. What? Yes, Ben just casually pulls this off and clones himself in human form, still with Omnitrix capabilities, which has never been established at all. Like, this is series breaking. Ben should never ever lose a fight if he can do this. But besides that brain breaking plot point, it also seems to split up Ben's personality. I don't know, just because? Echo Echo never did that, but we need a plot. So we got an overly sensitive and nice Ben, an aggressive, arrogant Ben, and a normal Ben, I guess. Ben Prime? But even despite the obvious solution right here, sensitive Ben goes with Kevin to stop the Knights, and arrogant Ben goes to see Julie's game. Which, oh my god, why would you pick the worst option? Which goes about as well as you would expect, with arrogant Ben just being a smarmy ass publicly in our tennis game, and the Ben being too soft on the people he's supposed to be stopping. But okay, in all honesty, the one good thing about this episode is that sensitive Ben's acting kind of funny. Never do that again. But poor Julie is stuck with her boyfriend humiliating her and openly admitting he doesn't care about her interests. Come on, it's just a dumb old tennis game. Besides, she was supposed to lose anyway. And you can say this isn't really Ben talking, but it's an established part of Ben regardless. And even the rest of the episode sucks as the Forever Knights get a mystical alien mech suit and Ben, despite having the power of three Omnitraces, fails completely and just ruins himself. Come on, man. And then just turns back to normal and decides this isn't worth it and never does this again. Ugh. And then to make things worse, he uses Lodestar and instantly wins. Oh my god, I hate Lodestar so much. People who know me elsewhere probably know this, but I seriously hate Lodestar. Not only is he annoying and forgettable, but he doesn't do anything. He has the powers of magnetism, but all he does is stand in point and win. There is no action, no excitement, no cool battles. He just stands and points and instantly wins. And what does he do here? Stand, point, instantly wins. Who needs fighting choreography, am I right? And also, what about this looks like metal? This is entirely rock. But besides that, Julie does win the game anyway. Good for her. But Julie does think that Ben has to ditch her to be a hero, and understands that that's just what it means to date a superhero. Wow, didn't it go that way? I'm surprised. But then she finds out that instead of that, Ben prioritizes watching a stupid movie over her and his heroism, and understandably walks away with Ben alone feeling like a jackass. What an episode, what an episode. Yeah, this deserves the most hated Ben 10 episode award, or at least a huge contender. It's not even good as an episode itself, but my god, this has ruined Ben's relationship. Ben is just a terrible boyfriend, and even just a terrible person. He didn't care for Julie, nor her goals, and did everything he could to weasel his way out for his own selfish desires. It's such awful characterization to Ben, and it's so hard to see the character he was through the character he is now. It reminds me of how Adventure Time had Finn and Flame Prince's breakup that I covered recently, where a person would give everything to their partner, suddenly acts like a selfish douchebag and doesn't care about their significant other. I hate when shows do this to drastically change everything about a character just to force a needed character drama. It's horrible writing. That's not earned drama and everyone hates it, but at least Ben tries to make it up to her. I promise I'll make it up to you. And by make it up to her, I mean cheat on her with the clone of his cousin. I'm not kidding. What about Julie? Julie broke up with me. No, she said you might as well be broken up. Two to one, majority rules, don't wait up. I want to punch you in the face so badly. And that's not even it, he cheats on her even before. But this culminates in another terrible Ultimate Alien episode, Eye of the Beholder, where Basil is being held hostage by a bunch of boring aliens after stealing one of their artifacts, and ship goes to save him. Though they take time in the middle of a fight for a more relationship drama, where Julie does say that they haven't broken up, it just feels like it. Considering how little time you have for me lately, we might as well be broken up. That is not my fault! Dude, the last major episode of Ryan 2 had you ditching her to see a movie. It kind of is. But yeah, their relationship has seemed to gotten strained after that, for good reason. She says he's only here because he needs to get his help to get shipped. Which of course, Ben doesn't care about at all. 
What a prick. Time is different. Sure. Well, good luck. If you keep acting like this, you deserve to break up. But at least Kevin and Gwen agree to help. While forgetting they're in a fight they're literally just in. Bro, if the knights also just walk past them in disgust, that'll be the funniest thing ever. It's funny how the episode says that Ben can't be with Julie because he's too busy with hero work, but we like never see him with her in his downtime. Like, just at all. Like, he can't even commit to his own relationship at all. Honestly, this episode might be better than his worst at his most whiny, egotistical, and scummy. Even the other characters has had it, which kind of makes them bad for what they say, like, man, they're harsh, but also justifies it's god he's insufferable. Don't make excuses for him, Julie. You stuck by him and he didn't do the same for you. Again, they're kind of completely right. Thanks, duped. But Ben comes to an epiphany to try and talk to Julie, like, actually talk, and tracks them down. And then doesn't, just again being an insincere jackass. Like, come on, this doesn't make sense even in the episode. But they go and try and save Basil, and at the very least, we get more Mega Suit Julie action. But that gets resolved as Julie offers shit back since he clearly still cares for Basil, and this is insanely forced. And this episode is the worst version of Real Vredel. But Ben stands up for Ship and Julie, and they reunite, and none of this was earned. But hey, at least Ben, for like the first time in this episode, apologizes for his behavior and promises to be better and the two make up. But knowing this series, it's not gonna be long before he does the exact opposite. Yeah, this episode was also terrible and did the relationship no favors. Everyone is awful in this episode, especially Ben. It was a pain to get through. I don't deserve this. I'm a world famous hero. You're a world famous jerk. I seriously hate when this show forces crappy teen romantic drama because it's so terrible at it. But at least they did make up at the end for how bad this episode is. Also, I should bring up the live action movie that took place in between Alien Force and Ultimate Alien, Alien Swarm, which I don't really want to talk about. But I will bring up that they suddenly introduce a kind of love interest in Ben's childhood crust, Elena, who's involved in the main plot of the Alien Nano Chips and stopping the Natchip Queen. But it's also canon to the show, as a bunch of stupid things happened as the Natchip Queen took over Elena and loves Ben. It's kind of weird. I would talk about Flame Keeper's Circle, but that doesn't really focus on their relationship. But hey, at least Julie was the one causing the problems here, even if it was within reason. What's really more focused is the episode Perfect Girlfriend, where Julie leaves State for a tennis tournament and Ben takes her to the airport and actually seems sincere. By god, can this be character development? But then Ben gets called for hero action and Ben needs to go, but then implies he wants to bring Julie? Why? You don't need her at all. Do it yourself, dude, and let her leave. She's probably even like 20 minutes anyway. Come on, Julie. Serpent's come out of his hole again. No, I can't. My life is just as important as yours. Like, why though? This is so stupid. And come on, Julie. After you literally said the opposite, she and Gwen do the generic, why don't you prioritize me? Ugh. This is the worst superhero cliche. But Ben gets trapped by a villain he seriously has no right to be defeated by, but Julie rushes in and stops him where suddenly Julie said Ben mattered more than her tennis game. She's also more directly in love with Ben and tries to spend more time with them, but is also bending over backwards to fulfill what Ben wants. Even if Kevin and Gwen can't believe it, Ben is uncomfortably okay with it, though Ship is also a lot angrier around them, foreshadowing. Even Gwen encourages her to stand up for herself more, but Julie pretty much enables it since love is about doing what makes the other person happy, and Ben continually exploits that. Ugh. Also, another hero has to stop the villain despite abandoning their loved one moment, but Julie actually does encourage them to stop the crime. Wait, wow, a reasonable response? And this is suspicious? Oh, come on. But then Kevin is faced with... What the... Mike, the evil living building! But... After that, Ben actually, wow, becomes a decent boyfriend and refuses to do anything but what Julie wants to do, making her confused. But then watching live tennis, sees Julie on the screen. But yeah, it turns out ever since the airport that this was Nano Queen Alina disguising herself as Julie, doing everything she can for him in her vision of love. And wow, I really hope this episode refers to Elena's twisted version of what love is, and not that the perfect girlfriend is someone who's a complete doormat, because then wow. Also, real Julie conveniently comes back, taking a break to see Ben again, and then gets wrapped up in this BS. Elena goes on the offensive now trying to kill the person she loves, but Julie points that out in her weird vision of love that she stops and flees. And this plotline is never followed up again in the series, but frankly it wasn't really that good to begin with. 
You'll see me again. No, we won't. Now, while this isn't as bad as the other episodes, it does really push out kind of the worst in the relationship. Julie now has become a lot more of the stereotypical hero doesn't have time for me crap that's so overused in these stories and no one likes, which doesn't make sense because he literally said the opposite in Duped. And Ben just doesn't really care for Julie as a person and doesn't care at all when she continually gives up her own agency for him. It's really sad to see how the relationship has turned out. People say this is proof that they shouldn't be together, but I don't call crappy characterization just the first drama a legitimate reason. It's terrible because the characters are suddenly written to be terrible. It's like again with Finn and Flame Princess. I don't say the relationship would never work solely because Finn would suddenly abuse his girlfriend and get wet dreams. And it's weirder that the final episode of Ultimate Alien, Julie is one of the people who helped Ben to deny universal power and stay true to himself. So it acts like so much other relationship drama just didn't happen. But it also does reinforce it in a way. It has them finally an on-screen kiss with new appreciation and respect for each other. So at least you could say it ended well. And then Omniverse happened. Omniverse gets a lot of hate for its art style and lighter tone. But honestly, I think it's a huge improvement from the bland, overly dark style of the UAF era. And especially that it doesn't fall into the forced drama it often makes. It's a breath of fresh air and without it, Ben 10 would lose so much of its appeal. Plus it has backgrounds I can actually see. Definitely was nice to see after going through Ultimate Alien for this. It brings me to one of my favorite episodes of the series, Hot Stretch, where you get introduced to Esther, part of the Kraho race. A tribe of tungsten based beings with very high body temperatures, allowing them to stretch their limbs to great proportions. Esther herself is half human, for unexplained reasons, don't think about it. Esther steals a nuclear core for her people living in a section of the underground alien community under town for a generator to heat it up to their normal living temperature as Ben and his partner Rook give chase. Esther's a super fun character for a youthful and dynamic nature, playing off Ben well with her attitude, and this episode makes them kind of have a Spider-Man black cat dynamic. But they do bond a bit, showing a much lighter and heroic personality than her criminal facade to help her people and also Ben from the raft. However, Seabick, the tribe's leader, was using her to get the nuclear core so that they can terraform the planet to make it suitable for them to restore their species. Honestly, it kind of brings up a lot the episode doesn't elaborate on, like, are they close to extinction? Are they refugees? How long can we stay in this cavern? A generation? Two, maybe? We need a world, Esther. But Esther didn't know and even helps in the stop Seabick's plan and ends up becoming the tribe's leader through combat. Esther even rallies the other Kraho for coexistence with the planet. And yeah, Esther is a great character. She has a super fun personality, awesome powers, and even has strong story potential being the leader of the Kraho tribe. Hell, she may be one of my favorite characters. But you might be asking, isn't he still dating Julie? They don't acknowledge that at all in this episode. But it does in season 2's Rules of Engagement, which made one of the most hated episodes of the show and might have contributed to Omniverse's insane backlash. The episode has been shocked that Julie is coming back to town, presumably for an out-of-state tennis tournament, implying they haven't talked in forever. And also, side note, but I freaking hate this Julie redesign. Omniverse is very hit or miss with its designs, as everyone in the fanbase feels, but I really hate how they did Julie. Like, the faces look so off, the eyes are too slanted, the bangs are way too big, and the pigtails just don't feel like her. Even the flashback design doesn't look right to me. However, going to meet her, we find that Julie is now with a new boyfriend, a photographer named Herb. Wait, a new boyfriend? When did they break up? Oh, you wanna know? You really wanna know? So, it turns out this was all from a miscommunication where Julie interpreted Ben rage quitting at a video game as him breaking up with her. You're the worst! Not ready for the next level! I am paying attention. You're strangling me! Okay, I love you, Omniverse. I love your great visual style and dynamic animation, compelling and engaging season-wide story arcs. Your contributions to the world building of Ben 10 cannot be understated. But by God, you can piss me off! Omniverse has a huge problem where when it has the chance to have a serious moment or tell a stupid joke, it's gonna tell the stupid joke 90% of the time. And we get the actual dumbest, most inane reason on why this couple broke up. It is idiotic and it's incredibly frustrating. How did no one on the team realize this was a terrible decision? 
Like, literally, her last appearance had them reinforce their relationship, finally kissing, and then Omniverse comes along and immediately gets rid of that through the most dumbass way possible. Look, I know that Julia and Ben's relationship was getting terrible, largely through crappy character writing to justify bad drama, but at least you can end it with some dignity. At least satisfy those who have been watching over six seasons and over three series about their relationship. But no, we get this shit. It's incredible. It's actually incredible. Also, again, Ben never contacted her ever since then at all. Wow, he's still an awful boyfriend. And then we get... Uh-huh. But now I've got a boyfriend who puts me first. Oh, go to hell, Omniverse. Even though Julie accepted that fact long ago, stupid episodes changed that, and even then mostly implied and forced, to a stereotypical, you never have time for me saving the world crap, and that's just become her old character. Look at her now being cold, standoffish, and selfish to Ben. Really? This guy? You had your chance. Make your point. Fast. Cause yeah, Julie was always like that. And then Esther pleads Ben for help that her people are being attacked and Ben has to go. God, you are really doing this crap, aren't you? This is just complete character assassination. Also, why are we bringing her here? Like, literally, why? But anyway, let's stop Princess Luma, the Tetramans who's engaged to Ben. Yeah, kind of complicated. But hey, at least Julie does stand up for Ben here. They, ben never asked to be a hero, but at the end of the day, he does a lot of good. Which she already should know, but it's not Ben 10 without characters learning the same lessons again and again. But Julie has to face off against Luma and gets, hey, ship, was wondering where you were this entire time. And we finally get some mecha action again, where she's able to finally defeat her. Well, at least you got one cool thing from this mess of an episode. Honestly, the whole fight is kind of cool and proves how underutilized this suit was. And I just wish Julie's character now to be assassinated to do it. Well, at least Ben's actually nice as Ship for once. Ship. <laughs> hey, Ship! What is this characterization roulette? But at least they make up and agree to just move on and be friends. Oh, well, then she's sure to appear later and help out in other episodes, right? What part of this makes you feel Omniverse likes her at all? She only has one more cameo in another episode in a game show with all the other female characters and yeah, I'll get to that mess later. And her only contribution was being so stupid she got eliminated immediately. God, someone on this show's writing must have just f***ing hated Julie. She is seriously the Ben 10 character who has done the dirtiest in the series. Yeah, I made it clear this episode just ruined Julie so much and I completely understand why so many people hate it and hated Omniverse because of it. After their relationship went through so much over so long, just to end it this insultingly? Yeah, it's horrible. And it especially ruined Julie by betraying so much of her character and making her to an abrasive ex she never acted like before without reason. After all I've said about this relationship, this is how it ends. What. A. Joke. But okay, maybe this want to wipe the slate clean and start over with Esther. They had a great start at Hot Stretch, and I even said it would be my favorite ship. Clearly, she's gonna have a big role. I mean, they got everything they need. Hell, she's gonna be part of the main team. Nope. Despite all of that, she literally only appears in five episodes of the entire show. Yes, really. Why even bother if you're gonna do that? This is so bad, come on. And what's even worse is that Every single one of her appearances, minus her first one, it's always involving other romantic drama about Ben's love life, so it's never actually developed. The relationship literally went nowhere. Why? Next one is Catfight, where they seem to be on a movie day, but Ben doesn't really notice or care about her. Nice to know things never change. For Princess Luma from before and Princess Atea of the Incursion Empire, overarching villain of the third season, needs a marriage partner and seeks out Ben at the same time for both their Tetraman and Incursion form. Also, there's a cat girl who hypnotized Ben, but not really romantically, who's in there for some reason. She's not important. Esther's also there to help Ben, but she's also not really important. I guess arguably this episode could be about romantic tension with Luma and Atea fighting for Ben's affection. But even though it's been a reoccurring thing, it's never really treated seriously and it's just suited for conflict. But at least it does bring some of Esther and Ben's affection in a relationship that has non-existent development. Though Ben stops the conflict by saying that they seriously don't need him as a trophy husband when they're strong leaders, and they immediately agree not even liking that much in the first place. Man, this episode is pointless. What just happened here? I... 
am not sure. Maybe they should just marry each other. I mean, it would unite and strengthen their empires, and they clearly have a lot more in common than they'd like to admit. Just saying. And yeah, this was somehow the best building of Ben and Esther's relationship, despite it barely being the focus. Well, what are they going to do instead then? The answer is the worst thing they could. Halfway through the series, they decide to just ignore the relationship they established from the beginning, and then bring back Kai. Yeah, this bitch has been seen or mentioned since classic. Well, okay, maybe she changed a lot since then. I mean, she was only 10 years old. And she did. She got so much worse. While she was kind of boring, now she has become insanely standoffish, aggressive, and bratty. Like, even when she asked for Ben for help after her grandpa got kidnapped. Rescue my grandpa. Make that we have to rescue your grandpa. Miss Green, it is a pleasure to meet you. I just called you for backup anyway. I'm sorry, did I miss a scene? What's with the sudden attitude? Tennyson is nobody's backup. So you're not gonna help me? Well, we're already here, so... Is everyone here just bipolar? And yeah, get used to that. It's their entire dynamic. I'm not kidding. Literally, anything that comes out of either of their mouths is a snide comment or argument. And it gets old insanely quickly. It's like if the little kid bickering of young Ben and Gwen just lasted until they're 16 and that triggers some sort of weird romantic buildup. Literally, nothing about them works as a relationship. None of their interactions work as building attraction. It's all bickering. And no, you can't just build a relationship solely on bickering. Now even I kind of like a snide and snarky couple who are willing to poke fun at each other, and it does have the advantage of putting someone like Ben in his place, but you have to add more than that. You have to, at some point, sow legitimate understanding and care to your partner. You know, an actual healthy and functional relationship. And I get none of that. Kai hasn't matured at all since being 10 years old. In fact, I'd say she'd regressed. And this brings out the worst in Ben, who's back to being 10 years old as well. And a lot of the time, it's not even light bickering. Sometimes it's legitimate, hostile arguments where the two legitimately blow up at each other and hate each other until they suddenly don't. It's terrible. Fine, then go. Asking you here is my grandpa's idea, not mine. Whatever. Have fun finding your temple. One second she's patting my head and the next second she's stepping on it. Neither of you is at ease around the other. What could it mean? It means this is a terribly written relationship. Like God, for Ben and Julie for how bad it got, at least it started out sweet and wholesome and they got ruined by completely terrible character writing. Here, it never gets good. It never even was good. And it doesn't help since Ben's IQ dramatically drops 100 points whenever she's around. Someone's trying to steal the orb. The ball? Oh, oh for sake. Well, at least Kai must have matured a bit and stopped fantasizing over Ben as a wolf, right? Oh, what makes you think they would have done otherwise? So, you couldn't even change into Ben Wolf if you wanted to. Yep, way too tall to be a house pet. <sighs> Come on, you had furry ears and a curly tail and- Good boy! <sighs> oh, good boy! Hey, I'm not really a dog, you know. Then, why is your tail wagging? It was great seeing Ben Wolf- I mean, Blitzwolfer again. <laughs> Figures you'd say that. Sure, let's make one of the creepiest attractions in all the series a cute little character quirk. Why not? That's another huge problem with the relationship. Kai does not respect Ben as a person. Just not at all. It seriously comes across that she only cares about Ben for his alien forms. Not only does Ben Wolf, but for his entire Omnitrix playlist. She doesn't even consider them and Ben to be the same person. It's appalling. You were as good at being normal as you are at being alien. Uh, who was busy saving your life? Whatever happened to good boy? That was for Blitzwolfer. Nice move! Thanks, I've been practicing. I was talking to Ball Weevil. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? This is a legitimately toxic relationship, and the show just doesn't care. Kai is now the queen of the show, and they'll bend over backwards as a justifier place. Sure, they're a couple despite literally everything in the writing saying otherwise. Hell, why not let it be worth to take Excalibur? Yes, THE Excalibur. I mean, not an actual intergalactic hero. No, a bratty archaeologist is more than worthy enough. God, she is a complete writer's pet. Every scene with them can just be summarized as snide comment, arguing, yelling, contempt, but then they forget about it a second later and rinse and repeat. Sorry if I sound way too harsh and negative, but I had to marathon this and it just got so painful at this point. I just hated watching this. 
Skipping ahead a bit, there's World's Most Dangerous Game Show, which is maybe one of the stupidest episodes written by Yuri Lowenthal himself. And I love you to death, Yuri, I really do, but this was softball. So out of nowhere, some reality warping game show host alien who feeds off of drama. Just, just go with it, my brain's broken by now. Forces every female character in the show, minus his relatives, and teleports all of them to compete for Ben's love. Just, why? Not only does this make no sense in the series, but why do this in the first place? Ben 10 is not a harem anime. And honestly, this episode just makes me feel disgusted. Like, I don't know, this just feels insanely sexist. Yeah, sure, take all the show's female characters, even the very strongly developed ones, and just make them all compete for the attention of a guy. Hell, even a grown adult married woman is competing for the hand of a teenager. And Brent surprisingly doesn't care that he's being held hostage and is being forced to a relationship against his will, nor anyone else. What is with this episode? This is horrible! Oh, and let's not forget, it ends with Ben picking Kai over Esther. Turn down a cute stretchy purple girl? What the hell is wrong with you? But you might ask, why are they bothering with such an awful relationship? It's because of this frame. Right here. This bonus piece of trivia is why. The thing is, Omniverse really wants to be like classic. It's their M.O. Bring back characters, story arcs, aliens, whatever. Some of it is welcome. Other times it's taken an entire multi-seasonal arc and pointlessly retconning it to be much less interesting because Classic didn't really explain it so it doesn't need an explanation. And even though I already explained why the episode itself proves this pop-up is terrible, Omniverse treats it like the Bible. So if it says it, it must be true. But they didn't make this canon, or this canon, or this canon, or even this one which says that this isn't canon. So yeah, let's go make the most horrible relationship I've ever seen because some jackass wrote a sentence into PNG. And how they justify it? With one of the worst things possible. So remember Kenny from Classic, Ben's future son? Well now he's also Ben and Kai's son. And he has to go back in time to make sure his parents are married... for some reason. Even though time travel has been established that altering the past just creates a new timeline, so even in the show this doesn't make any sense. So his new Super Sentai asterisk is best to justify them being together because, come on, it just works out. Despite, you know, everything in the writing making sure it doesn't come across that way, even the episode makes it clear they're not going to work out, and that's literally the most justification it ever gets. Because this guy says so. This is why it works. Are you serious? You can't make an audience care for a relationship because one guy says, don't worry, it will work out. That's not writing. You might as well replace him with the writer straight up saying, You want this. This is going to happen because we say so. Hell, even Spanner has a hard time trying to actually make them freaking like each other at all and convincing the others and them that they're meant to be. And it's even worse because it's one of the biggest instigators of Ben and Esther officially breaking up. I mean, Ben is a dense idiot, of course. Aliens have old stuff? I thought aliens only had future stuff. Why did they write him brain dead in this episode? But yeah, it was only a matter of time before they would since... Well, if you write Ben this way, how can this not happen? And with what Spanner said and the attention Ben has to Kai, he's making her worried about their relationship. And then her next appearance, they break up. But hey, at least it wasn't over a gaming spat. But instead it's over... I like you. I do. You're really cool. But... I'm tired of fighting fate. Come the hell on! You might as well say, I'm only doing this because the writers want to and couldn't come up with an actual reason. But hey, at least now we can focus on the relationship with absolutely no redeeming qualities. No, they're not actually gonna make them work as a couple. You crazy? Just skip to the future where they're happily married. That's good enough, right? No, it is not. Can't do this show. You can't have a legitimately toxic and horrible relationship with all the screen time being how they just cannot work as a couple, and this result with off screen, oh, it worked out in the end. I hate to say it again, but that's not writing. A writer's job is to tell a narrative that is believable to the audience that they feel is real. They did nothing to actively convince the audience that it works out. It's just, here's a couple that hate each other and they can't work, but this guy said they work, and now they work much later because we say this. This is horrible. After all of this, just to get resolved so half-assed it's awful. And it just excuses one of the most toxic relationships I've ever seen. This is more forced than everything I've said prior. Everything. 
And you might say to me, well in my Chowder video I said I was fine with Chowder and Panini getting together in the time skip. You're a hypocrite. The thing is, Chowder is a wacky, over the top cartoon that's an exaggeration of childhood. Every character is over the top and it plays up childhood crushes and boys have risen to girls as pure comedy. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. These are like 8 year old kids in a wacky over the top world. Not practically adults at this point in a serialized comic inspired story lasting 280 episodes. Hell, the entire point of the finale is that the kids need to grow up and become responsible. Now I'm not even super into it, I just think it was fine to resolve the characters, I don't especially love it. This had episodes and episodes of build up trying to convince the audience to support it and it falls on its face so hard. The writers say so and they say so because of this one image. It's amazing that after everything I've talked about, that the ship that ended up winning was by far the worst one. Look, I love Ben 10 so much. How many videos have I made on it already? I love pretty much everything else about it. But it's amazing how it just continually fails at just the basics of building a relationship. And I hate to be this negative. I did not make this channel to be negative. But going through this, it was just horrible to sit through all at once. And it's not just me. Ask anyone in the fan base, they'll agree. Ben 10 just cannot do romance at all. When it tries to make something of a respectable relationship, they change the characters to force completely unjustified drama. When they're not doing that, they decide to barely utilize them, even though they directly write and refer to their own potential, even outside of love. And even when they're not doing that, they're doing whatever the hell the Kai crap is. And it's not like they couldn't make it work, they just didn't bother to make it a good relationship that people could like. Like, why was all of this so bad? It just eludes me. How did this become the most healthy relationship in the show? Oh yeah, because even if it starts out kind of forced, do a healthy love and respect for each other, both truly caring about the other and building up their relationship and sacrificing so much for the other and becoming better people overall. It was a huge contribution to Kevin becoming a dirty backstabbing rogue to someone who deserves love and respect. I like the Kevin that Gwen sees when she looks at me. And I like that you gave me another chance, even after I messed up all those other ones. I owe you guys for changing my life. I'm not saying it's amazing or anything, but it's far better than what they gave the main character of the show. And I just wonder, they write Ben so much as not being emotionally mature enough to hold an actual relationship. But then at that point, why continually try it? Why bother adding so many romantic plot lines and interests if you're not going to bother to develop it and make the audience actually care? Like, I just don't get it. Did Ben didn't even need this? The show's not about it. It could be fine without it and frankly better off without the garbage episodes that resulted from it. I compare it to a regular show, but honestly, I think this is worse. Yeah, it had awful soap opera as love triangles and misunderstandings and drama, but at least it just knew when to stop it altogether. And at least it didn't canonize the most toxic relationship I've seen because they felt like it. Stuff in the air Ben 10 would continue, and I do want it to, if not just to cover something about it that's relevant here, but if they do, Please, for the love of God, don't do romance. And if you do, please do it better than this. And anyone else who may be writing something, please take everything I've said to heart and make sure whatever you write for romance doesn't end up as messy as all of this. I hate to spend a day like Valentine's Day talking about the worst romance plots I've ever seen, but think about it this way. No matter how bad your love life is, you're never gonna have it as bad as this, guys. See you later. Just how many girls are in your life? At this point, I haven't got a clue. Uh-huh. But that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls, really witty girls, singing ditty girls. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls.